So, you're thinking about buying a used Range Rover L322, are you? Hmm. So this video offers my thoughts on what to look for if you decided that you want to purchase a used Range Rover L322, particularly the TDV8 version like mine. Where to start, what to look at, what's of concern, and how to go about it. So to make things simple, when viewing a new vehicle, I often start at the front and decide to work around in a clockwise fashion. So what should you be looking at? Well, really, you want to look at the bodywork and also the linkages, the brakes, tires, interior and switch gear, faults, and of course the engine. So you've decided to go and inspect a vehicle. Uh, today's probably one of the worst kinds of days because it's been chucking it down and the vehicle's wet. Um, it's not ideal um, viewing a car from a bodywork perspective when it's got rain all over it. But it is what it is. If you've travelled and you've got to go and look at it, just deal with it. You've got to have you. Start at the front. So I'd be interested in starting right at the front position. Let's look at the bumper condition. Let's look at the condition of the paintwork. Are there lots of stone chips? Are there any signs of rust? And let's move around in a clockwork fashion all the way around the vehicle doing the same things. Don't get too bogged down and look at anything mechanical at this point. Look at bodywork. Bodywork's not the be all and end all, but it's a good place to start to get a good feel for how this vehicle's been looked after. Is it clean? Is it free from rust? Has it been driven in salty conditions? Blah, blah, blah. The way the water runs off on these, you get rust on the edges here and, and on the other edge. If you look just under here, can you see there are drain holes? There's a drain hole. And there's another one on the other side as well where the water will run down on the inside of the of the, of the bodywork and it will rust from the inside out there they all will eventually but you just want to have a good look and see what the condition of this one's like um, all of the electronic wizardry sits in here in, in the UK that's the rear passenger side uh, once you lift this panel out you can get access to everything in there up here you've got phone integration this is the DVD-ROM for the maps uh, on the GPS. This thing, which is uh, playing up on mine, is your DVD multi-changer. And then lots of these modules down here uh, are for all, all sorts of other things in there. You're not really gonna be able to do much uh, diagnosis on looking at any of that stuff. But what you will be able to, to, to do is just see if there's been any water ingress, if there's any damage, has it been knocked, has anything been removed, are there any cables flying free? Let's have a good look. Does it look in good condition? Is it all? bolted down nicely there you go when you get in the car feel free to have a good look around check everything that you can see is all the switch gear in good condition what's the rest of it look like from a cosmetic point of view try to ignore if you're at a dealer all the bullshit that he's spewing just focus on your own task you're not interested in what he's telling you because he'll be telling you everything's amazing so once you're in get your key stick it in the ignition Turn it on. Do all the lights come on? Uh, see what lights up. Start the vehicle. Is there any hesitation when you try to start? Are there any faults showing up at the side? Let's turn the volume down on that. I've got two uh, warnings that show up there. One is the side light bulb, not a problem, sort that out. And the other was the tire pressure warning uh, light, which I know all about. Are there any other warning lights illuminated? Any other error messages coming up? Apart from that, how does the engine sound? Sound pretty good? Feel free to have a play with all the toys, turn the heater on, whack everything up to, to max. Is everything gonna work properly? Stick the front heated windscreen, the rear heated windscreen on. Stick everything you want on. Try it all out. Uh, try the stereo out as well, listen to it, all that sort of stuff, you know. Then the last thing you want to do, I would do, is mess about with the air uh, suspension. Don't mess with it necessarily, but put it on. We're going to raise the suspension up a little bit. Check that you're actually raising. I can feel the vehicle going up right now. You probably can't see on the video. But uh, car is going up. Does it raise properly? What's it telling us here? Is it still going up or is it done? Feels like it's pretty much got there for me. And while you're in here, before you turn the engine off, 
put the vehicle on full lock, one way or the other, doesn't matter which way. So you're on high suspension and you put the vehicle on lock. So you can go and have a look now uh, at some of the stuff that's difficult to see. On the outside, uh, in the wheel well, the front wheel well, let's go and have a look. So you're now able to see a little bit more. You can get right in here and you can start to have a look at all the boots, all the connections. Are they split? Are they perished? You know, here's our steering rack here and there's our boot. It feels pretty, pretty good. As you drop links, you can have a look at uh, what the condition of these are. Is there any play in any of these at all? And up at the top as well. Have a good look around. You don't have to be a qualified mechanic, but you can have a good old look. Does something look loose? Does it look worn? Are any rubber parts split or perished? Have a good look at the wheel as well while you're there. And do it on the other side. When it comes to the brakes, brakes are very important and especially important on a big car. Stopping power is really important. So check your brakes, have a look at the discs. Are the discs in good condition? How new are they? Is there much of a lip at the edge? And when we talk about a lip, that's uh, how much it's worn on this bit compared to the edge. You know, this is a brand new disc, so obviously there's no, no wear really there. But get right in and you can have a look at how much meat is on the brake pads as well. I'll try and take a, a close-up photo for you to have a, a look at that. But go around all of them, check them all. Check if there's uneven wear. Um, it's important. Here you can see how much brake pad material is remaining. Okay, so we want to have a look under the bonnet. If you're not a mechanic, you need to know what to look for. Now, at a very basic level, we're not going to be doing a full breakdown on the condition of everything under the hood. So starting from the top left, here you've got your brake fluid reservoir. Have a look at it. Is it going down? Does it need topping up? Does it look like it's been topped up recently? These are all questions to ask if it looks like it's been topped up in a, a sloppy fashion. Um, why? What's been going on there? As we come down here, all these pipes are brake pipes going into your ABS unit there. Um, have a little look. Is anything corroded? Is anything coming away? Does anything look like it's been fiddled with? Over here, we've got coolant. Have a look at the levels where it needs to be. Oh, so you can pull the dipstick out, check the engine oil level. Um, have a little look at the oil cap. Has someone been filling it up? Um, and also check obviously underneath when you're checking beneath the vehicle, is there any oil leaks? All these hoses here have a tendency to get a little brittle uh, on these vehicles and they can split as well. There's a lot of heat generated uh, off a TDV8 and that heat doesn't help all the rubber components under there. Um, so things like this, have a good feel, have a good look underneath them. If you can get underneath, do they feel like they've been replaced at some point? Um, do, do they feel flexible still? That's a good uh, indication. Can you squeeze it? Is, is it? is it squishable still? If it's not, it's a bit old and that's just something to be aware of. Here's your airbox with your air filter in. Um, airflow sensors, have a little look. Uh, again, we're just looking for indications that it looks good or bad or that it's been fiddled with. There's your fuel filter down there. Again, anything leaking, anything there, giving us indications of things to worry about. Uh, and then I'd probably leave it about there. Your battery's back here. You can have a look at the condition of the battery. Does it look like it's uh, in dire need of replacement? I mean, looking at a battery, not gonna tell you any of that stuff really, but uh, from a visual point of view, it doesn't hurt, does it? Just power steering fluid and, and washer fluid just there. That's about it. If you want to take the engine cover off, don't feel under any pressures uh, that you can't. Uh, if you're a dealer, just say, mind if I have a quick look? It just pops off, by the way. Uh, all you need to do is just lift up here uh, and it'll just release this four, four press, uh, press down locations. It just sort of clicks down. You can pull it off, have a, have a good look underneath, uh, into the car and have a damn good test drive. Um, whether it's a private sale or whether it's uh, a professional, you know, a dealer, take it on the test drive. Again, don't be, uh, don't listen to his bullshit or her bullshit. 
Uh, just listen to your own thoughts, listen for sounds, try and turn the stereo off. You will have tested that already in the car. While you're driving, you wanna be going on, putting the car on full lock both ways. You wanna listen for any knocks in the suspension, knocks in the steering, any squeaks and bangs and clattering sounds, anything that is gonna upset you. Try and give the car a bit of welly, not if it's cold, obviously. Try and uh, drive it for a good few minutes to get the engine up to temperature. And then uh, put your foot down a little bit. Don't go crazy, but you wanna know how the car's gonna react under heavy acceleration. When you've done all that, you'll have a good feel for how the vehicle's working. Is it in good condition? And then you can create a bit of an internal scorecard on how you're gonna value this vehicle. Is it worth what they're asking for it? That's basically what you're gonna do. For some of you out there, including me actually, I've done this before, it doesn't hurt to walk away from a potential sale, if only to just give the seller time to reflect on how interested he thinks or she thinks you were when you were looking at the vehicle. You might just wanna to go to a cafe around the corner, have a coffee and have a little think for a minute. You might have traveled some distance to come and look at this car and you don't necessarily want to go all the way back if you are interested in buying it but you don't necessarily want to say so there and then have a think about it have a think about your approach are there some elements where you can get some money knocked off always mention the tires the condition does it need any servicing jobs coming up did you identify any things when you were looking around that need doing have you got an oil leak that you've spotted it might not be serious but it might be something that you want to use as a bargaining tool bit of leverage you know uh, get a few quid knocked off and then you can approach your negotiation if you want to buy it um when it comes to negotiation you know you could spend your life uh, researching how to negotiate uh, anything but uh, the crux of any negotiation really come down to which one of you has got the best alternative if you don't make a deal uh, there and then so what i mean by that is if the guy or lady selling the car have put it on at a really good price, you know, you've been hooked because the price is really low and you've done your evaluation of the car and it's all right, actually. Let's say there's nothing majorly, wor you know, major worries that you've got. You're in a position there where they've probably got more cards in their hand than you. They've put it on at a fair price. The vehicle's in okay condition. They just want to get it shifted. You've not got much to bargain with there. They will probably walk away from that sale a little easier than you will. So in that instance, that is, this, is, this is exactly what happened with this vehicle. It was on very cheap. I didn't identify anything that massively worried me that I couldn't sort out, apart from the rear brake discs, which were horrendous when I bought this car. But apart from that, um, everything worked. There weren't any warnings. As you can see from looking around, um, there aren't any bangs or rattles on the car. So I thought, you know what, if I don't buy this, someone else is going to buy it today, probably, if not tomorrow. If it's the other way around, you've got more cards in your hand. They put it on for a higher price. You've identified a few things that aren't so great. You're in a strong position to negotiate there. So go on, make a, make a cheeky offer and get the sale. If it's been up for sale for a little while, they might just accept it. And then you've got yourself a bit of a deal. Um, and there you go.